Humanoid robots are no longer just factory workers or sci-fi dreams, they are now athletes. After witnessing the world's first-ever humanoid robot boxing tournament in China this past May, the idea of robots entering the realm of sports went from curiosity to full-blown spectacle. But that was just the beginning. Now, they are stepping onto the football pitch, and this might be the most ambitious leap yet. On a cloudy June afternoon in Beijing, history was quietly made, not with the military prithems and vision systems, all designed to mimic the teamwork, strategy, and spontaneity of real football. It wasn't just a spectacle. It was a signal. A preview of what's coming not just in sports, but in robotics, AI, and how we define competition itself. The vision behind the match, robot sports as a testbed. At first glance, robot football might seem like a novelty, like a quirky tech demo designed to impress a few journalists. But dig deeper, and you'll realize this was a controlled laboratory dressed up as a sporting event. The upcoming World Humanoid Robot Sports Games, set for August 2025, will build on this momentum. The goal isn't just to entertain, it's to push robotics out of simulation and into the unpredictable, chaotic world of physical interaction. And football is the perfect test. It's fast, unstructured, and constantly changing. It demands real-time decisions, multi-agent collaboration, object recognition, and graceful locomotion, all skills that robots have traditionally struggled with. In other words, a robot that can play football is a robot that's learning to handle the real world. The engineers and the machines, teams that made it happen. The match featured four top Chinese universities, Tsinghua University, China Agricultural University, and Beijing Information Science and Technology University. Each brought their own engineering teams, strategies, and AI models to the field. But the robots themselves came from Booster Robotics, a Beijing-based robotic startup that has been quietly advancing bipedal humanoid locomotion for years. These robots stood about 1.2 to 1.5 meters tall. Each had 23 joints, 10 in the legs, 6 in the arms, and 7 in the torso and neck, giving them an almost human-like range of motion. They were designed to walk, pivot, kick, fall, recover, and most importantly, decide. The hardware were. Each robot used stereo cameras and depth sensors to perceive the environment in 3D. AI models then translated this data into movement, dodging obstacles, tracking the ball, and coordinating with teammates. Unlike Boston Dynamics robots, which are known for fluid movement and complex Pakao routines, these football bots were designed with a narrow mission, succeed on the pitch. That meant optimizing for walking stability, dynamic balance, and fast decision-making under pressure. Think of them as early versions of robot athletes, not built to look perfect, but to compete, learn, and improve through experience. The rules of the game, a new kind of football. This wasn't FIFA-level football. The field was much smaller, 14 meters long and in size, and the tension was genuine. But more importantly, the game was completely autonomous. No team was allowed to control their robots remotely. Everything happened on the field, in real time, with zero human intervention. This wasn't about remote control, it was about giving robots a brain and letting them make their own calls. Clumsy but brilliant, why imperfection matters. Yes, the robots fell. A lot. They missed easy passes, whiffed on shots, and often ended up in hilarious slow-motion pileups. But every awkward stumble told a deeper story. These machines weren't pre-programmed. They were learning on the fly, adapting to real-world dynamics, and making decisions without any human fallback. When one robot passed the ball to a teammate just as a defender approached, the crowd gasped. It was like watching a toddler take its first steps, wobbly but full of potential. These moments weren't just charming. They were history. Because with every move, these machines were getting closer to mastering coordination, anticipation, and teamwork, core skills that define intelligence. A glimpse back, the robot boxing phenomenon. Just a few months ago, in May 2025, China hosted the first humanoid robot boxing championship, a spectacle that saw Unitree's G1 robots exchange blows in a fully scored combat sport. The tournament wasn't just entertaining, 
it was a technological milestone showing off balance, coordination, and real-time human-robot collaboration in high-impact situations. It turned heads globally and opened the door to a new genre of robotic competition, one where athleticism, tactics, and performance matter. That moment signaled the start of a movement, and football is quickly becoming the next frontier. Toward August 2025, what comes next? The robot football match was just the beginning. In August 2025, the World Humanoid Robot Sports Games will debut, with international teams competing in multiple sports. The Global Humanoid Robot Olympics, where machines not only play sports, but compete in disciplines like gymnastics, sprinting, and even martial arts. These aren't just competitions, they are testbeds for innovation, forcing AI to evolve not in code, but in context. Final thoughts, the game is just beginning. What happened in Beijing wasn't perfect, but it was profound. It showed us a future where robots don't just sit in labs, they run, fall, get back up, and play. Where AI isn't just statistics on a benchmark, it's a presence on a field. And where the line between science fiction and science reality gets thinner with every goal scored. We're witnessing the rise of embodied intelligence. And like any athlete in training, these robots are just getting started.